What's going on YouTube? It's Mid40s Gamer here, coming at you with some more Elden Ring content. Today we're going to be taking a look at the new Whiteface Varite quest that was updated as of patch 1.06, which allows you to complete his quest line offline so you don't have to feel so maidenless when invading other players. So let's get ready to run this from scratch, tell Melina Vare got to us first, and get oh, after yes. it. Our story begins right here in Limgrave as we make first contact with white-faced Vare, who's one of the very first NPCs you'll encounter when you begin your journey across the lands between an Elden Ring. His questline is fairly in-depth, but it isn't as long as some quests in the game, and while the new changes to this quest adds a bit more to complete in PvE fashion, it isn't overly difficult. From here, Vare will send you out on your first mission, which is to kick in the doors of Stormvale Castle up on the hill and clear it of its would-be ruler, Godric the Grafted. After exhausting Vare's dialogue at this location, which seems a little long-winded, we'll head to Stormvale Castle to face off against Godric. Godric the Grafted is the first main story boss you'll face off with, unless you count Margit the Fell Omen as the main boss, but really, he just seems like a warm-up, since he folded faster than that overnight crew at the Gap. As far as this questline goes, Godric is your biggest friction point, and once he's out of the way, it's pretty much smooth sailing. With Godric out of the way, you can return to the first step and speak with Vare once again, who will have a bit more dialogue for you. He'll congratulate you on a job well done and point you in the direction of the round table hold where your next step will be to have an audience with the two fingers that resides there. Once you zone into the round table hold after defeating Godric and securing his greater rune, the inner chamber doors will be open to you and you can head in to have a conversation with the Lady of Two Fingers. She does have more dialogue than we actually included, but we'll let you experience that for yourself before moving on to the next phase of the quest. As a side note, while you can turn in your remembrances to her immediately, you should hold on to them and duplicate the important ones within the walking mausoleums. As you can see from the game footage, our next stop is the first step once again, and instead of seeing Vare, he's left a note on the ground for you detailing where he'll be, which is in the vicinity of the Rose Church within the neighboring zone of Laern of the Lakes. Once reading the message, you'll be gifted with a Bravo emote, and with that in hand, it's time to head off to the next location. The closest Site of Grace to Vare's location within Laern of the Lakes will be the Fallen Ruins Site of Grace, which as you can see from the map footage is just west of the prominent Academy Gate Town Site of Grace where you can secure the map of the region. After conducting a quick map check, we'll jump off the ruins, call our trusty steed, and gallop off to the west in the direction of the Rose Church. After a quick 200 meter ride, we'll make landfall on a small island that houses the church and right outside of its main door we can see Vare who's waiting patiently to give us our next set of instructions. During the conversation with Vare at this location, he'll give you a handful of bloody fingers that you can either use to invade other players online or you can use them to initiate an NPC invasion offline at the next location we'll be headed to. Keep in mind that when doing this quest online, you'll have to invade three separate times and win or lose, you'll advance. The same actually goes for the PvE version, you don't have to kill the NPC to advance the quest line, so basically, everyone gets a trophy. That being said, we'll pull up the map footage and as you can see, the PvE invasion will be located on top of the Altus Plateau and we'll be starting out from the Road of Inquiry side path side of Grace. From there, we'll follow the road to the south and then gradually east to a set of ruins in the distance. The ruins are easily spotted from the road and there is a stake of Marika right out front in the event you get slaughtered by a pack of blood dogs that lurks in the area. As soon as you hit the outskirts of the ruins, the first building to the left is where you can find the summon sign, and after clearing two or three dogs out of the way, you can fire up the summon sign, which uses up one bloody finger per attempt, and get ready to face off against a rather tough foe. Magus the Beast Claw is a brand new NPC within Elden Ring after patch 1.06, who not only wields a spiked hammer, but utilizes a holy symbol to cast a few bestial incantations. There are a couple of attacks that may send you to an early grave in one hit depending on your level, but his incantations can be interrupted, so if you're having difficulty, a speedy weapon with bleed on it seems to work fairly well. He does roll dodge quite a bit, so pick your attacks carefully, or you'll end up hitting nothing but air. If you do manage to defeat him, he'll initially drop a rune arc and a fur calling finger remedy prior to you returning to your own world. And when you get returned to your own world, he'll drop his weapon, the Great Stars, and a somber smithing stone. With Magus out of the way, we can return to Vare at the Rose Church and prepare for our final task before gaining access to Magwin's palace. 
During this particular conversation, Vare will give you two options, to be anointed or to refuse. If you choose to be anointed, he'll present you with the Lord Blood's favor, which is a white swatch of cloth that looks like he ripped it from the only clean part of his robes. Your final trial for him will be to soak the cloth with Maiden's blood. There are two Maidens to choose from, one within the Chapel of Anticipation where you first started the game, and the one will be guiding you to, which is within the Church of Inhibition. After exhausting all of Var's dialogue at this location, we'll pop over to the map footage where we'll be starting this attack run from the Bellum Church side of Grace. From this side of Grace, we'll be crossing over the road to avoid catapult fire and skirting the zone wall up until we can make a turn to the east where there is a rather annoying tower we'll need to get past in order to cut through the frenzied flame village and up to the church. Once inside the village, you'll be safe from the madness that the tower emits, but you may catch a little bit more of it on your way up to the second plateau where the church is located. And unfortunately, that's not the only surprise. After zoning into the Bellum Church, we'll summon Torrent and start heading out to the east with all haste. As you follow the game footage, if you're finding any value in this video up until this point, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you don't miss out on any new mid-40s gamer content. And if you aren't too busy wondering why Canada consumes more macaroni and cheese than any other country in the world, leave us a comment in the comment section and let us know how we're doing. After following the zone wall up until the break in the path and kicking things off with a few frenzied flame rats, this is where things may get a bit dicey for some folks, which is why we'll walk you through one of the ways to get past this rather annoying mechanic. The frenzied flame tower emits madness in the form of a far-reaching status effect that'll kill you if the bar maxes out and it builds up rather quickly. There is a spot down next to the tower in the low-lying tree-covered area where you can break line of sight and wait for the madness to subside before venturing out once more. If you time it correctly, and it may take one or two tries, you can speed over to the Frenzied Flame Village and get inside and out of the tower's line of sight before you completely die of madness. Once safely inside the walls of the village, and we use that term loosely, you can speed your way along the left wall avoiding enemies and venture up the ramp-like terrain on the northern side of the village, and once you're up on the first plateau area, it's just a hop, skip, and a jump to the next surprise in this almost completed questline. We realize that surprises are for birthdays and bad news doesn't get better with time. However, despite the fact that Torrent dissipated out from under us because he wants no part in this invasion, it's really not all that bad. While you do get invaded at this point when you're so close to reaching your goal, after that horrific ride through madness, you can just run past this invader into the church and light the sight of grace. Even if you die to the invader, you will respawn at the sight of grace so you can loot the maiden's armor and soak the cloth that Vare gave you in her blood. With this last task out of the way and the last bead of sweat wiped from our brow, we can return to Vare for the conclusion of this rather interesting tale. After speaking with Vare, he'll congratulate you on finishing the final trial, and he'll dish out a few rewards along with what seems to be a little bit of finger torture. The most important award for the PvE side of the house is of course the Pure Blood Knight's Medal, which is the key to entering Mogwin's Palace from anywhere within the lands between. Once all of Vare's dialogue is complete and you have the medal in your inventory, you can use it right away to teleport yourself to the best rune farming area in the game. Well folks, it looks like we're coming to the end of another Elden Ring video as we contemplate drowning our salad and dressing since drowning people we hate is frowned upon. We would like to take this time to personally thank you for watching our content, and if you haven't done so already, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you don't miss out on any new mid-40s gamer content. And if you aren't too busy wondering why bees sting other bees, leave us a comment in the comment section and let us know how we're doing. So until next time, just remember, Bangkok is the world's most visited city, Antarctica is the only continent without reptiles or snakes, and as always, good hunting.